Hi, it's John Wren. This is The Startup Show. We're here each Friday to talk about startup. If you're starting a new career, a new project, a new campaign, or a new business, you're in the right place. Each Friday at noon, Mountain Daylight Time, or any time by recording. We're on YouTube, live events, uh, Google+, Plus, on-air hangouts, and www.johnren.com, J-O-H-N-W-R-E-N.com. Uh, if you want to be on the show next week, uh, give me a call, 303-861-1447. Today we're going to talk about how do you start a new campaign. And, uh, you know, there are various kinds of campaigns. Really, I think very much the same rules apply to all of them. What we're going to focus on specifically, though, is deciding to be a very active citizen and to start a campaign leadership or to be a, a candidate. We'll talk about the four phases and um, how you can apply them to your own particular situation. Every situation is vastly different and uh, that's true of starting a new business too. Our primary focus for the last uh, almost two decades has been startup of businesses, but we're gonna focus Increasingly in the future on startup of campaigns for political office, uh, of careers, and of uh, product campaigns. If you've got, uh, I've been a product manager, if uh, you've got something you're selling, a campaign can open a new territory, uh, sell new products to existing customers, uh, change. Uh, there are just a number of things it can do. And so we're going to focus more and more on campaigns and also projects, project management, because starting these things are very much like starting a new business. It's just a matter of who finances the operation. Uh, each Friday afternoon, there is an Idea Cafe startup workshop. I lead it personally. It's free and open to everybody, and we hope that when you're in Denver visiting from out of town, you'll visit and then take it back home with you. Maybe be our ambassador with your local chamber. Uh, Small Business Chamber of Commerce uh, has a startup method, and we encourage people to have various types of groups they participate in that prepare them for being an active citizen, for being an entrepreneur, for playing whatever role in life uh, they've been assigned. Each story, each life is a story told by God is one way of looking at it. So we'd like to help you play your part just a little bit better. Um, we're here to watch each Friday at noon anywhere in the world. And then hopefully, eventually, anywhere in the world for these Idea Cafe startup workshops. Join us this afternoon, Panera Bread Cafe, 16th and Market. Start at 4.30. I'm usually there by about 4 o'clock. And right after is Socrates Cafe, which we pick a topic at the meeting, and it's just a, a discussion group. I also am at one at uh, the University of Denver each Saturday at 6.30. We're in the current periodicals in Anderson Academic Commons. So. All these things are on our website, smallbizchamber.org, uh, or on our Facebook, Small Business Chamber Divided by Periods, or tweet us at Idea Cafe. Well, today we're going to talk about starting a campaign. A great movie is The Candidate, Robert Redford. Uh, we watched that at the College Republican National Convention when I was state chairman of College Republicans, and Karl Rove was the national chairman. And uh, we won a competition, and we had the, the uh, national uh, annual conference here in Denver. Karl Rove came out, and uh, on either the first night on Friday or on Saturday night, I can't remember which, but we watched Robert Redford and the candidate. And uh, what it makes very clear is there's sure a difference between campaigning for public office and holding public office. And so hopefully part of the preparation for running for public office is there's been some preparation for holding the office, but often that's not the case. And, um, and, and we're really not going to talk about holding the office here today. Uh, you know, what we, we do is try to stay neutral in nearly everything, except we have started Save the Caucus, which has a very specific political purpose. We've raised no money. We've really spent no money. I've spent some money personally, but as far as the committee work, uh, you know, we're kind of dormant because we're not really quite sure how to proceed. The Colorado Caucus has been under attack here. I personally um, 
mounted an effort, and uh, we were able to you know, keep it from being legislated, but now there are some uh, things pending. And But at any rate, we're, that's our only political involvement. Is We say that our purpose, the Small Business Chamber of Commerce, Inc., our purpose is to try to help strengthen the grassroots uh, in both business and politics through education activities. Uh, we see this show as educational and not political. We're not trying to build a huge organization and uh, take positions on you know, whether am I on the left or am I on the right? I don't know. I seem to make both sides mad at me from time to time. Maybe that is good. I'm not sure. Uh, I believe that if you want to play an active role in politics in our country, you probably need to affiliate with one of the major political parties. But that doesn't mean that you're married to them. I believe in changing parties. Uh, you know, I, a hero of mine, uh, John Schaffer, terrific governor here in Colorado, and he started in one party and finished in another. There have been a number of examples of that. And um, party loyalty is sort of a good thing, but it's a little bit like patriotism. You know, we don't want to, I, I believe that we should all be in this country patriotic citizens and that we stand up when the flag comes by and so forth. But that doesn't mean that we discount the other countries around the world. You know, we are, are one world. Now, we can go too far with that. I don't believe in one world government any more than I believe in uh, the federal government making decisions for all the states. I think here in the United States of America, we've got the best system where we have states trying things. Sometimes it makes sense on the federal level. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but all that's beside the point as far as starting a campaign. So what we're going to talk about today is what I've learned over the last few years about what do you do to run for elected public office and win. One thing that you do to begin with is nearly always affiliate with a political party. And uh, we'll talk about that more in just a minute. But there are four phases to any startup. First is deciding to start. And at some point, you know, you've got to have the fire in the belly that you want to run for office or that you want to help other good people get elected. And, uh, and, to, and the primary decision along those lines is, do you want to be a party leader or do you want to be a political candidate? And uh, there's a mistaken belief today that being active in a political party is a good way to become the candidate for that party. But I've seen repeatedly that uh, the advice that I got from my friend Lyle Lindesmith, a neighbor, was really right on target, and he'd learned it from personal experience, is that being active in a political party doesn't really help you if what you really want to do is to be a candidate yourself. Now, you participate in the political party, but you do it in a different way than if you want to be a leader in the political party. And so that's a primary decision. Would you like to be a candidate yourself? Or would you rather be active in a political party? Now, it doesn't mean you just sit down and think about that for years and years and years. I mean, these are things you th keep in the back of your mind as, you, uh, as you're making that decision, you're doing other things. One of the things I would suggest is that you affiliate with a political party. Now, which party? My friend David Fogel says, you know, whatever office you think you might be interested in, you ought to join the majority party for that representative area. Because if I'm in a, a solid red Republican area, or if I'm in a solid blue Democratic area, and I'm not running with that major dominant party, it's almost impossible to win the election. And I don't believe that the political party should be like your church. I think they're wonderful megaphones. The political party is a wonderful megaphone they are terrible if you're just there to take marching orders. You know, I'm, I'm there to put across my point of view in one party or the other. And you move the party. Now, my friends in the Green Party and the Libertarian Party, there are just, it's unlimited number of third parties. They put a few on the ballot now, but that's not nearly all of them. You know, uh, to be a major political party, you need to be over... 10,000 votes in the last major election for one of the major offices. But a political party can be just a few people getting together. And there are a lot of political parties. And 
the chance of any one of them winning and getting their candidate elected is virtually zero. And my, my friends in those parties say, well, there's no difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. And I say, that's the way it's supposed to be. They are competing for a majority of the voters, and that moves them towards the center. You have much more radical politics in a multi-party system. Plus, the average ordinary person doesn't have nearly as much understanding of what's going on or say so in the process in a multi-party system because most of the deals are made closed doors, not always smoke-filled anymore, but they may, you know, they're not something that everybody is included in. And the two major parties have their problems, but more so than the third party, the average ordinary person is involved, especially here in Colorado, where we have this wonderful system that is the very best chance for the average ordinary person, is the best chance for the common person to be able to serve an elected public office. And that's our Colorado caucus that was developed out of the progressive reforms in 1910. Governor Shafroth called a special session. The Colorado legislature held a gun to their head and had them adopt this caucus system that was a powerful way to move a Spear and Stapleton, especially, off of their thrones as caucus kings. And make it was just sort of like Tammany Hall here in Colorado. And Shafroth saw a way to change it, and he did it. And that's why party leaders ever since have had a burn under their saddle about the process, because it really does hold their feet to the fire of accountability from the party membership way more than anything else. Now, what they continually try to do is to say, oh, yeah, but the presidential primary, you know, that way we're going to get more people voting in the presidential primary. Yeah, and, and to totally take the power out of the caucus that causes the political bosses the problems. That's why the political bosses almost always are going to be for getting rid of the caucus. And it takes the active grassroots members to rise up and to say, no, we're not going to do that. Now, here in Colorado, we had a, a presidential primary, and it just about killed the caucus. So we went back to the caucus system. It still hasn't recovered. And now they're pushing again for the presidential primary. Why? Because it kills the caucus. We know that from experience here in Colorado. On June 11th, they're going to have a meeting at the Capitol. I hope everybody that's had a good experience will with the caucus will show up. Now, a lot of the people that have had good experience with the caucus are dying, you know, because it's been a while. They had these three election cycles with the presidential primary. It just about killed the caucus. We still haven't recovered from it. And March 1st was just terrible because it was it became clear to me that it looks very much like the state chairs of both major parties tried to kill the caucus. But at any rate, this is a bit of a diversion. Uh, pick a party participate. Which party? Usually the majority party in whatever district that you're running in. Uh, if you, if you want to run for city council, what's the district? What's the majority? Join that party is usually going to be to your advantage. Not always. Every situation is different. Now, that's if you want to go the candidate route. How about if you want to be active in a party? There, it's almost the opposite is true. If you go with the major party, you're maybe going to have a hard time getting your voice heard as compared to going in with the party that's kind of discouraged, and you can come in and rise to the top very quickly in those sort of situations. So that's one reason to decide, do you want to be a candidate or do you want to be a party leader? The party leader almost always is going to get into a position of leadership beyond their local area quicker if they go into an area where there is a certain weakness and uh, people have gotten tired and they need some fresh blood and you can be that fresh blood, bring it in and help put them on the right track. Now, politics is the matter of reaching out to people and educating them. And yes, there is a bit of a difference between the re Republicans and the Democrats, but in the long run, really not hardly any difference at all in the long run, because they're both competing for the majority of the voters in every race. And with this gerrymandering in the past, it's created a bad situation where only the majority party can win, but that 
may soon be eliminated. So we'll, we'll hope for that. And uh, it's going to level the playing field even more if that happens. But for right now, you just have to, you know, play the ball how it lies. Decide yeah, that can be a process of going and talking to both political parties. Uh, you know, that, but you prepare yourself after you've decided. So you decide, do I want to be an active citizen, yes or no? And if you don't, turn off this video. You know, this is going to be a waste of your time. You can decide right now. But that doesn't mean it's a final decision. Keep thinking about it. And as you talk to the people in both political parties, you kind of get the lay of the land of what's in your particular area or where you're going to move to. If you move, you sort of start this process over again. Uh, there's this decision. And um, one of the things that's helpful in making a decision like this is your inner circle. Uh, my friend Tom Morris in his book, The uh, Everyday Patriot, which is a great little motivational book on why we each should be active citizens. But Tom talks about the importance of an inner circle. These are your family and friends and the people that you work with closely. That you bounce things like this, you know, off of them from time to time to help you clarify your own thinking. Hey, have you ever thought of running for political office? Now, a lot of people will say, no, you shouldn't do that just to keep you from getting hurt. And um, it is brutal. You know, you have to go into it with the attitude that um, it's sacrificial love. It's long, hard hours for not much pay. There's always these temptations to be led in a bad direction in all kinds of ways. Uh, but it's, you know, some people say it's the worst system that's ever been, except for all the others. You know, it is not heaven yet, is it? And this is how we live together in our country. And you know, what's the alternative? Ultimately, I guess the only other alternative is something where we are just cogs in a machine. It's sort of like Bar Borg on Star Trek. And, uh, you know, we just take our orders from what we hope is a benevolent dictator boils down to. This is an experiment started 235 years ago or so, and we're still experimenting with it. And there's a lot of pressure now to just throw in the sponge and say, we're done. But if you and I will make the decision that we want to be active citizens, pick one route or the other, and then prepare, we can make a difference over the long run. Now, preparation is education. And I'm a big believer in self-directed education. Uh, very few of us are autodidacts where we can just read, think, maybe jot notes and, and learn on our own. Uh, that's why colleges, in a way, you know, serve a useful purpose. They continually are reaching out with things that you can participate in. Formal education definitely has a role. If you can, you know, afford a Harvard education in terms of time or money, and if you can get in, well, you know, that wouldn't be a bad way to go. Although recent research shows that as far as what you are going to learn at Harvard, you know, it's probably not going to be much better than if you just learn on your own. But you do develop a network there. You meet the faculty, the alumni, the students that you go to school with. And that has a, a great value. The certificate, they certify that you've learned. If you're self-directed, you know, nobody knows for sure if you've learned it or not. At least at this point, there may be some certification methods being developed that will change that later on. But one way or another, you have to be a learner if you're going to participate in public office. Now, you don't even have to read, really. There have been people that are illiterate that have been very astute because they listen. They tune in to other people that are doing the reading. But I'm a big believer in reading the daily newspaper, a couple of them, get two different points of view. And I do that even though on the internet you get most of the same news for nothing. But it's very valuable to have the editor lay out the page and the paper and you can just tear off what you're interested in, not have to go to the printer and print it out. So read the newspaper, number one. And uh, number two, you know, be active in life. Everything else that you do will help prepare you for public office. I think that it's a disservice to young people to have them go straight into public office, public service. You know, I before I ever but even I was working full time. 
And I think that helped me be a, a better voter. Uh, but everybody lead their life to the fullest possible extent. And you may get an idea that, okay, I think I'd like to serve in public office and then take classes in that direction. But you sure don't have to study political science to end up being a candidate. You know, study political science if you want to teach political science, if uh, it's an area of interest of yours. But, you know, it's maybe the least liberal of the liberal arts. And, you know, I think some schools it's a BS degree, which is very appropriate for the political science degree. And others, you know, the, uh, somebody said, well, the difference between a BA and a BS and the BS you know, we're actually doing stuff, and in the BA, we're observing. Well, the observing sometimes is a better way to learn. Life's just way too short for any of us to learn from just our own experience. You can take that too far. History, you know, they say that if we can't remember our past, we're going to repeat it in the future, and that's to a certain extent true, but it doesn't mean that there's this template to life, and we look at the past and then can automatically transfer it to current decisions. If we're only living in the past, we're maybe going to miss the opportunity for seeing how new some things are today. But I'm, as you can maybe tell, I'm a big believer in a, a liberal arts education if you can afford the time and money for it. I think if you get four years to spend on a college campus studying uh, with people, it's to your advantage. Online education, everybody likes because it's cheaper and faster. I'm not sure it gives you that same experience, though. Maybe 80% of the people are going to end up being online educated and not have that on-campus experience, which is really too bad. But if you can get it, you know, there's a lot of scholarship money that goes unclaimed. If you look hard for scholarship money, or you may just have the personal resources in your family to be able to go to a, a good small college. I believe in that. And uh, that, to me, is the very best preparation if you've decided that you do eventually want to serve in public office. And it doesn't have to be Harvard. First two years at a junior college is probably a good idea. You know, it keeps the price down on an absolute minimum. There's just been a study done that the average tuition paid is half of the public straight now. There are just so many aid programs available. So you don't look at the published tuition number and think that's what you're going to have to pay, and it's negotiable now. So go in and make the best deal you can for yourself or for whoever you're trying to help. But like I say, I'm a big believer in self-directed education, and it used to be. This has kind of changed recently with colleges because they need money so desperately that they're getting away from this a bit. But when I went to a liberal arts college, what they said they were teaching us was how to learn and that we'd become independent, self-directed learners. So you get a bachelor's degree, and then you might go to a trade school like law school or you know, medical school or something like that. But for those of us that just wanted to serve in public office someday, maybe, you know, we didn't need to keep getting another degree. Now they've changed. They keep bringing you back for salons. And, you know, some. I, I think it's a great idea with the alumni group. You know, they, they have classes that are samples and so forth. But this is people, they're learning into a whole nother bachelor's degree. That just seems crazy to me. If you have a bachelor's degree, why do you need another one? And if you're going to be a doctor, you have to get a medical degree, yes. Or if you're going to be a lawyer, you have to get a, a degree in law now, unfortunately. Maybe it would be better if we go back. You know, uh, Abe Lincoln didn't have to go to law school. He studied law and then passed the bar exam. Why, why don't we go back to that? I'm not sure. I, I think, well, I am sure. It just holds down competition. You know, the existing lawyers don't want a lot of new lawyers coming in. Everybody was doing self but. If you want to start a business or you want to start eventually a campaign so that you can hold public office or if you want to start a campaign so you can help other good people get elected, I don't think you have to go and get a college degree on that. You can learn about that on your own, but I'm a big believer in forming a self-directed learning group so you have like-minded people learning together, not all reading the same book and discussing it. That's, that's another approach, great books approach, and that's, that's good too. But a self-directed learning, everybody's learning on their own, and then the group facilitates that independent self-directed learning. So you come together and share what you've learned. And as you share, the group benefits, 
but the main benefit is the person that's doing the sharing. You know, until we've understood something well enough to teach others about it, we haven't really understood it. In nursing school, they teach nurses to, when they have a new procedure come along, to watch one, then to do one, and then to teach one. And once they've taught one, they really know it. And a self-directed learning group gives everybody the opportunity to do that very thing. So there's been the decision in phase one, preparation in phase two, and whatever form that takes. And these may take a weekend. It may take a lifetime. You know, you may never feel like you're ready. But at some point, you get to phase three, which is the start of the campaign. And I'm a big believer that you kind of have to watch for the main chance, as Ben Franklin used to say. He, he writes about that in his autobiography. He would watch for the main chance because there are these opportunities that float along. And if you want to just make up your mind and set a goal and then grind away at it, go for it. But I've learned in life that the way it usually works is that life is more like recovering a fumble then it's like throwing a touchdown pass. You know, you look for the opportunity and you're aware, and then when you see the opportunity, you take it. And it, you'll see an opportunity. If you want to be in party leadership, probably tomorrow morning, you know, you could see an opportunity because there'll be either a precinct committee person vacancy or a district captain vacancy, a county chair vacancy, a state chair vacancy, or they want to get rid of somebody because they don't like the caucus, which, I mean, I think it's outrageous for anybody to be in a party leadership role in Colorado and not be supporting the caucus 100% because that's the system that's been entrusted to you. How can you, before the caucus, say we've got to get rid of the caucus, but both state chairs did that? Well, you know, we're almost out of time. Uh, you see the opportunity, you take it, and plan it a day at a time. You know, this one day at a time is a powerful concept, and that's the way things really happen. This idea of writing out a lifetime plan, having a bucket list, that kind of stuff, that's a formula for a misery and depression. So take stock now. Where am I at? What are the opportunities? And what am I going to do today to advance the ball? Now, if you haven't decided to hold public office, that's where you're at. What can I do to help myself decide whether or not to run? If you don't see an opportunity, what can I do today to prepare to be an elected public office? And if you campaign, you start the campaign, the next phase is what do you do after the election? Whether you win or lose, assess the situation and then begin again. You have to recover. Get back up on your feet and do it again. And sometimes you don't win in your first race. Abe Lincoln didn't, but he kept running. And uh, that may be the case for you too. And, or you may run once and say, you know, that was a good experience, but I think I'm better off as a party leader. I'm going to help other good people get elected, work in a campaign. But if everybody does just a little bit in our system of government, it works. When very few people are doing anything and every, all the rest of us are just watching on TV and complaining, it doesn't work. And that's where we're at right now. You know, you, you know, and we have to trust that the little bit that we can do ourselves with God's help is enough. So make a decision, prepare yourself, watch for the opportunity, take action, and then let's see where we're at after the elections in November, okay? So that's how to start a campaign. Next week, we'll be back. If you'd like to be on the show and talk about your startup experience, I'd love to have you on, especially if you'd like to start uh, a new campaign and you're thinking about it and you're, you've decided, you're preparing, and now you've found an opportunity. You're the person I'm looking for that I'd like to have on next week with me. Or if you've started a business and it, you, know, you decided to be in business, you prepared, you found an opportunity, and maybe you're not even to your first customer yet. I'd love to have you on with me to talk about what it's like there on the front line. So this is the startup show. We're here each Friday at noon and uh, Mountain Daylight Time, you know, sponsored by the Small Business of Chamber of Commerce, Inc. We'd like to have Idea Cafe startup workshops springing up around the 
Colorado and around across the country. You can come to one this afternoon. It's free and open to everybody. We're at Panera Bread Cafe, 16th and Market. Also, we support Socrates Cafes. And if you'd like to be listed on our Socrates Cafe Society of Colorado, we'll put you up on our meetup list to help people know about where you're meeting. It's not rocket science. We pick a topic at the meeting and then share our thoughts and ask each other questions. And uh, Franklin Circles are adult self-directed learning groups. If you want to know how to start one, just Google how to start a Franklin Circle. It'll come right up. Or take a look at the smallbizchamber.org website. If you have questions about any of this, Small Business Chamber of Commerce Startup Method, the various meetings, the free meetings that are open to everybody, or if you'd like to talk to me about how you could get some help one-on-one, -on -one, give me a call, 303-861-1447. I'm John Wren, wishing you the clear vision that life's far too short for any of us to learn from just our own experience. Life is very short, so let's go get started. Thanks for watching.